Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Time for service. Amen. It is 1030. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, anyhow, never let your problems get you down. When life trials come your way, lift your head up high and say, Hallelujah, anyhow. Hallelujah, anyhow. Never let your problems get you down. When life trials come your way, lift your head up high and say, Hallelujah, anyhow. Hallelujah, anyhow. Hallelujah, anyhow. Never let your problems get you down. When life trials come your way, lift your head up high and say, Hallelujah, anyhow. Everybody standing. Hallelujah, anyhow. Never let your problems get you down. When life trials come your way, lift your head up high and say, Hallelujah, anyhow. Hallelujah, anyhow. Hallelujah, anyhow. Never let your problems get you down. When life trials come your way, lift your head up high and say, Hallelujah, anyhow. Hallelujah, anyhow. Hallelujah, anyhow. Never let your problems get you down. When life trials come your way, lift your head up high and say, When life trials come your way, lift your head up high and say, When life trials come your way, lift your head up high and say, When life trials come your way. Lift your head up high and say, Hallelujah, anyhow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is it. Hallelujah. This is it. Hallelujah. We say thank you this morning, Lord God. We say thank you because you're wonderful. We say thank you because you're always good, Lord God. We just say thank you for this whole week, Lord God. Thank you for today. Thank you for waking us up in our right minds, Lord God. Thank you for bringing us here, Lord God. Thank you for the souls you didn't save, Lord Jesus. We just say thank you for the consecration week, Lord God. We just say thank you for the wonderful things you're doing for Church of Apostolicity. We say thank you, Lord God, for the things you're doing in each and everybody's life, Lord God. We say thank you, Lord God, for choosing and us, Lord God, to be the ones to turn the world upside down. We say thank you, Lord God, for this wonderful doctrine, Lord God. We say thank you, Lord God, for this beautiful preacher, Lord God. We say thank you, Lord God, for these wonderful saints, Lord God. We say thank you, Lord God, for the month and all the teaching you've been giving us, Lord God. We say thank you for the tests, the trials, Lord God. We say thank you for our jobs and everything, Lord. We say thank you for every situation we're in, Lord God. God. We say thank you for our cars, Lord God, our kids, our spouses, Lord God. We just say thank you for everything, Lord God, because we wouldn't be here without you, Lord. So we just want to say thank you. We want to say thank you. We don't have the words, Lord God, but you're awesome, Lord God. We don't have the words, Lord God, but you're beautiful, Lord God. We don't have the words, Lord God, but you are always doing something for us, Lord. 
And we want to just say thank you on this morning, Lord God. Continue to bless those that are here that ain't saved, Lord God. Move on the people that ain't saved, Lord God. Save somebody today, Lord God. Continue to fill people up with your spirit in this place, Lord God. And let our sounds of our praise, Lord, reach out to the streets, Lord God, and bring the people in. Drive them here, Lord. Don't let them just look at the signs and ride by. Let them park, Lord God, and come inside, Lord God. We just say thank you for the souls you're going to bring in here, Lord God. And we know it's already done. We thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. It's been a wonderful week. Amen. Wonderful fast, Lord. I'm just, I'm just eager to see what else God's going to do. Amen. If you turn to James, James chapter 1, we'll go back to our theme scripture. James chapter 1, verses 19, 19 and 20. When you have it, please say amen. 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 Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 Now I leave you in the hands of this wonderful mass choir.
For there's no other name I know Let's all just bless that wonderful name Jesus Bless that wonderful name Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. For there's no other name I know. For there's no other name I know. For there's no About the break of day, Jesus came and touched me, and He washed my sins away. I started running, I started shouting, found no time for doubting. I tell you that I got something the Holy It was early one morning, just about the break of day. Jesus came and touched me, and He washed my sins away. I started running, I started shouting, found no time for doubting. I tell you that I am. Oh, God, something is the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. Save me, the Holy Ghost. Set me free, the Holy Ghost. Change my God, the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost, it's the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, and He's moving. It's 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 moving. Oh! 
Everybody don't know. Everybody don't know. They don't know about him. Everybody don't know. Oh, who Jesus is. Who Jesus is. Who Jesus is. Everybody don't know who Jesus is. Everybody don't know.
Hallelujah. Give the Lord some praise. Thank you, Lord. I got to tell everybody. I got to tell everybody. I got to tell everybody about Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you don't feel something, hallelujah. Amen. 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 Can, let's continue to praise God. Amen. Amen. It's offering time. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand praise for our offering. Amen. 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 I just want to remind everybody that today is a special offering. Amen. For our pastor's birthday. Amen. A special love offering of $100. We're asking everybody that can give to give $100 each in cash. Amen. This is a, this is a special offering set aside for our pastor who we love. Amen. Our bishop. Amen. Amen. And then also do not forget, amen, this is also for the church anniversary as well to make sure that you also keep current with that as well. Amen. 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 We can praise the Lord in giving. Amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. God has given much to us. Amen. Amen. So if you are giving an anniversary offering, it's going to go in the blue basket. Amen. That Sister Sabrina is holding. Amen. Amen. All the other offerings, including the special love offering for our pastor, our bishop, amen, is going to go inside the offering trays. Amen. 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 So while we have our offering, amen, also pay your tithes as well, not excluding any of that. Amen. So everybody, let's continue to praise God as we have a, a isn't the praise and worship this excellent this morning? <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So let's continue to praise God. Amen. And we're going to have a song. And then everybody, please stand and follow the directions of the ushers to the rear.
was on a day just like this. There came a mighty rushing wind, and the spirit filled the place where the people were. Cloven tongues did appear and sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. As the Spirit of God gave the utterance, power, that believe in my name casting out devils won't be no big thing you can heal the sick even raise the dead i'm telling you what jesus said to those who will believe and to those who will receive his promises for every woman girl boy and man god will give you power to upon you after the Holy Ghost has come upon you you shall receive the power of God oh, after after you shall receive Come up on you. You shall receive power. Straight up. <laughs> Straight up. Yes, Lord. 
Got a few announcements before I, before I get into the sermon. Amen. We had some people to get the Holy Ghost. Amen. They got power from God. Amen. Power. Come on up, Brother Austin Elias Beverly. Amen. Stand right there. How you doing, man? Here, let's fix that. Go on the outside. There you go. Looking like a little champ here. Amen. Come on up, Brother Samuel James Whitfield. All right. Come on up, Brother Andrew Justin Quarles. And last but not least, this one this one here worked me. Amen. Come on up, Sister Erin Scott Quarles. Amen. Hallelujah. Now isn't that some talk about folks filled with the Holy Ghost? These are babies, y'all. These are all babies. God filled him with the Holy Ghost. Come on, let's give God a hand for it. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. And, and nobody gave them no tongues. God gave them tongues. Nobody told them they had the Holy Ghost. They told me, and they already knew it. They were just grinning. They knew up. And, 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 and Aaron, I had to make her say her words. She just didn't want to let them out. <laughs> Amen. God, listen, let's give God another praise. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Y'all still happy? I know y'all Y'all grinning. And listen, listen, brother. You know the first thing the boys said they wanted to do? They said the, the first thing they want to do is join a cleaning crew. And y'all ladies about cleaning the church. They can't wait to clean the church. Amen. And I heard Sky told her mom, so mommy, isn't it obvious what I want to do? Because her mom was in the choir, right? So, she said, so you want to sing, huh? You're going to come to choir rehearsal. All right. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and Sam, Sam said he wants to play the drum. So he got to come to every choir rehearsal, mom and dad. He going to sit with Tommy and he going to learn how to play the drum. Amen. And so you want to play the drum. I don't like quitters now. Okay. All right. So let's read what the certificate says. Amen. Amen. This certified that Sister Aaron, Brother Sam, Brother Andrew, Brother Just uh, <laughs> Austin, Amen. Following the examples of the apostles on the day of Pentecost, was filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues on Pastor Birthday, August 2019. Oh, that, no, that says August the 30th. Huh? Oh, okay. You know, we should have put that on there, Cassini. Say on Pastor's birthday, 2019. But that's all right. Amen. At the Church of Apostolicity, the Apostolic Doctrine in Los Angeles, California. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, we're going to take a picture. You want me to stand on the end or behind them? Come on, get behind them, Sister Portis. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, put this on Facebook and chat rooms and all them things y'all got. Amen. Wait a minute. Here, here, here. 
So y'all put them and tell, tell y'all parents y'all want a special frame for those. And hang them up in your bedroom. You told already? Okay. Well, you really should ask them. So don't, don't tell them. Amen. And then we had two people that said they wanted to join the church. Amen. <laughs> Sister Nicole, stand up. Amen. We call her Nikki. Amen. She said, you ready for me to do what? All right. Amen. Thank you. Then we got Sister Tamika. Stand up. He said, you, amen, you ready for me to do what? Amen. Come on, let's give the God a hand and pray. Hallelujah. So we got members. Now, let me give y'all some more good news. We're not going to have night service because we've been in church. So I don't want y'all, so y'all don't have to come back to night service. What y'all shouting about that for? Hey, I got one brother. Yeah, yeah, no. You wasn't coming back no way. <laughs> amen. But, because <laughs> I know we've been in church all week. Now, this week coming up was supposed to be a revival. But I slept it, so we're not going to have revival. We're going to have regular service. But we're still going to have the week of rest, because I know a lot of you all schedule things because of the week of rest. And I'm not going to mess with your week of rest. So this week, we're going to have regular church services. That's normal. But next week, I'll tell you more about it. Uh -huh. Yeah, we have we have prayer tomorrow night. We have Wednesday Bible class and uh, youth service. They have their um, happy hour, and um, we have you know normal service. But the next week we have week of rest, so we won't have any services but Sunday. But I'll tell you about that next Sunday. Amen. Amen. And then the other thing we have to go to Adams West at three thirty. So don't forget that. I want the mass choir singing at the Adams West today. Amen. Did y'all hear me? I want the mass choir singing. We going down the street where we go and have service every first, second, and third um, Sundays at 3.30. All right? I think that's everything. Right? I don't have nothing else to announce. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Um, now, let's go to Proverbs chapter 15. We had a great week this past week, y'all. Yeah. Great week. I, if y'all didn't come or miss or got some, hey, all I can say is hallelujah. Amen. We enjoyed it. So that's why God is going to give us tonight off. But we're going to come back strong on Monday night prayer. Y'all really got to learn to come to Monday night prayer. It's, it's helpful, man. It, it, it's helpful. It's helpful. It's helpful. So we're talking about slow to, slow to wrath. This is our month we're talking about slow to wrath. Slow to wrath. Amen. Everybody got it? Y'all know y'all supposed to have a Bible. Y'all going to sit right in front of me. Y'all done grew up knowing that. Should have sat down with one. Tell my here you go. Proverbs chapter 15. Amen. Welcome all of the visitors. First time, second time, third time, fourth time. Amen. Proverbs chapter 15. We're talking about slow to wrath. Let's go to verse 18. Y'all might well mark these two scriptures down. This one and Matthew 15. I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. Where's my nurse at? I want some hot tea. Something going on back there. Okay. Um, Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. Write that one down. But let's read Proverbs 15, 18 right now. Proverbs 15, 18. What does it say? Everybody don't have it. Y'all know y'all can't mumble. You got to read. Come on. Matthew chapter 5. Uh, I'm sorry, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 18 says what? In other words, you appease his stripe. That means you accept it, you deal with it, you fix it. 
but a wrathful man. For all of you all that wasn't in Sunday school, I told you wrath means you are poisonous. You got venom. You're poisonous. Amen. And you affect people with your poison. All right. Uh, 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 and it, it, it causes a burning sensation. In other words, it causes you to respond because something is affecting you because you are poisonous. Amen. All right. Also, what it means, a state of intense ple displeasure based on something real or something perceived to be wrong. Amen. Listen to me. It's a state of intense displeasure based on something real or something perceived to be wrong. All right? So that means when you get uh, angry, raffle, or upset, amen, uh, uh, if you're going to move them, don't take them out of the sanctuary. Keep them in here. There's enough chairs for them to sit down somewhere. So we have to understand if we are going to be walking around angry, and in wrath, we got we to gotta fix something about ourselves. We got to fix something about ourselves. What am I saying? We got to fix, we got to stop perceiving something that's not there or you got to stop responding to something that is there. Because when you respond in an anger or wrathful way, that meaning that poison in you, giving you a burning sensation and it's causing you to put venom on somebody else. Amen. So what are you saying? Slow. Remember I told you last month, all month I told you slow means dull, not exciting. So if it's not exciting and it's dull because somebody says something to you and upset you, amen, if it's dull, it's not exciting, why are you responding to it? Why are you responding to it? Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Thank you, Lord. Glad to see everybody here today. Everybody. Amen. I love people coming to church. I love seeing folks get saved. Amen. I just love seeing folks just get the Holy Ghost. We going to heaven, y'all. We going to heaven. Just stick with me. I guarantee you I'll get you to heaven. I guarantee that. Amen. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 5, verse 9 says what? Bless are the, bless are the, bless are the, happy are people that causes confusion to die. Peacemakers. You got to know how to shut things off. You got to know how to take the venom or the poison that somebody else put on you. In other words, when people mistreat you, don't respond to it. I gave the example this morning of how about me growing up in the South, bee sting, mosquitoes, wasps, all them things, they don't affect me at all. I'm immune to all that stuff. I'm immune to people talking about me. I'm immune to people putting me down. I'm immune to people not liking me. So that stuff doesn't bother me when somebody say it because I'm immune to it. Amen. I am immune to it. I'm immune to it. Amen. So I don't let stuff like that bother me. Y'all got to get immune to poison. Don't you be the poisonous person. Get immune to other people poison. Because anybody that's wrathful, anybody that's angry, all they doing is putting their poison on you. And because it's a burning sensation, you respond to it. Amen. Because it's poison, it bothers you. Amen. Yes, you don't like it when people do it or mistreat you or talk, but don't let it affect you. Just scratch your arm like you do a mosquito and keep on moving. Amen. You get bit by a mosquito, you take the bite and keep on doing what you know you're supposed to be doing. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Verse chapter five, verse nine. Read. He said, what? Bless are the. Bless are the. And what, what is he going to call you when you know how to make peace? Folk walking around lying, talking about they're a child of God and they ain't no peacemaker. You don't get classified as a child of God until two things happen. You get the Holy Ghost and you know how to make peace. If you don't know how to do both of them, you're not a child of God. Amen. You, if you got the Holy Ghost and don't know how to make peace, you're fooling yourself. You got to have both of them. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I told you also, your anger affects people. When you get angry, it, it affects people. It caused them not to want to be bothered with you. 
Nobody want to be around a person that's angry all the time or messy or causing confusion. And you think it's you and you think it's them, it's you. I don't want to be around you. I'm sick of that type of, that, 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 that behavior. I know wasps don't bother me. They can sting me and don't, don't even phase me. I probably get a wet, but it don't phase. I'm used to them. Amen. But I don't go over here and I'm going to hang out with them either and let them eat me up. In other words, listen, listen, I don't want to be bothered with you, but I ain't going to hang out with you and just let you keep doing it either. Amen. Because if I let you keep doing it, I probably will let it affect me and then I will respond. Amen. Because remember, poison or uh, uh, venom gives you a burning sensation. And after a while, it's going to bother you. But when, oh, hallelujah. But if you only get it when God put it on you, you're going to get immune to it. Because God said, I won't put more on you. What he said, I won't put no more on you than what you can handle. But now you can go put a lot on yourself thinking you can handle something you can't handle. Now you're going to cause yourself to become venom just like the person that's bothering you. So we got to be slow to rap. Slow to rap also indicate or insinuate that somebody did do something wrong to you. That's why I read and let you hear that it's based on something real or something perceived. Because somebody did mistreat you. You're not confused about that. But take it. Take it. It doesn't mean nothing. That's just a person's opinion about you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's go to Colossians chapter 3. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, 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 to have anger, but you can't use it. We read as we ended Sunday school this morning, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Don't let it go down on your wrath. God say, because I got the right to send you to hell before you wake up in the morning because you disobeyed me. In other words, I told you to get upset, but you better get it right before you go to bed. You better get it right before the sun go down. And because some people say that mean, he means before you go to bed. Okay, if you want to use that, I disagree. But if you want to use it. How many of y'all done went to bed angry, tossing and turn all night? God telling you don't go to bed and don't let the sun go down to save your headaches. Amen. We got to learn everything God tells us is for him, but it's for us also. But we too busy trying to find a justification not to obey the word of God. If it's in the Bible, God said, if God said it, you got to do it or can't do it, depending on what he's saying to you. Amen. But we got to understand, I, I am not going to be poisonous. I'm not going to be the one that caused other people to mess up because I want to get angry and be wrathful and call them to get poisoned. And now we all messed up. We stand in there arguing and fighting and both of you going to jail. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You get in a fight with anybody. The police taking both of y'all to jail. Because he don't know who right. Oh, he know y'all fighting. Colossians chapter 3, verse 8. You got it? Let's start at verse 5. He said what? Mortify. Mortify your what? That means get your body in shape. Get your body right. Amen. Get angry out. And a whole lot of other stuff. But we just going to deal with anger and wrath. You got a whole lot of stuff going on in your body. You need to fix that. From the top. Read verse 5. Mortify your members which are upon the earth. Stop having sex and you ain't married. Uncleaning it. Stop doing nasty stuff sexually. That's really what he was referring to. Come on. What else he said? Stop having no inordinate affection. When I asked y'all, some of y'all this morning, I said, don't you know if it wasn't for the mercy of God, y'all would be a molestator? Y'all would be molesting kids? Y'all would be doing a whole lot? That's an inordinate affection. And they're trying to make that junk a law. Amen. And they're going to probably succeed. They made homosexuality a law. Amen. They made lesbian a law. Listen, they made had nakedness a law. Listen, they probably going to succeed. But I pray the rapture is here before it happens. And I don't want to see it. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. Evil concupiscence. I mean, you can come up with all kinds of evil stuff. This folk can create some evil, evil stuff out there. Read. And coveting. He put coveting. Stop wanting what other people got. Come on. Read. What else he said? All of this stuff is. All of this stuff is what? Why is it idolatry? Because it causes you to do what make you feel good. The Bible said people seem to do what's right in their own eyes. 
you making yourself a God because you feel you can do what you want to do. You can't do what you want to do. Amen. That's why y'all, a lot of y'all have a problem being a member of this church because I won't let you do what you want to do. You ain't going to never do what you want to do unless God done told me to let you do it. So you might as well get over it. Amen. I'm not angry because I'm in charge. Amen. You the one getting angry and you putting out all that old poisonous venom, but you see it don't affect me. Amen. You can get angry all you want. And I'm going to tell you, if God called you to leave, in my mind, the devil have left the building. So you can see it's not going to affect me, but it's going to affect you. Amen. Because I know I'm doing what's right. Come on. Verse 6 said for what? For what thing the, the wrath of God come up upon the children God say, I put my wrath. God say, I put my poison. I put my venom. I put my burning sensation on you. And you don't want God wrath. You don't want God poison. You don't want God burning sensation. We call that hell. You don't want to do that. Amen. And can't nobody do nothing about it. But what am I saying? Listen, stop putting folks in hell. That's the title of the message. Stop putting folks in hell. Because when you are angry with them and you put your wrath on them, you're giving them a burning sensation, you're causing them to feel bad, you're affecting their behavior. Hallelujah. That's you putting folks in hell, not God's hell. A hell that you done created for the individual. And not only that, the person that gets that way, you're putting your own self in torment, you're putting your own self in hell. Listen, ain't nobody putting me in hell, and I sure ain't putting myself there. You ain't putting me in hell just because you mad at me. You're going to be in your own hell by your own self. I'm not going to let your venom and your poison affect me. Amen. So if you want to get upset, please knock yourself out. Amen. But trust me, I'm not getting upset with you. I'm going to walk away from you because I like heaven. I like peace. I like joy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Read that again. For which thing? Y'all not reading. Come on, read it, read it, read it. Listen, let me tell you something about me. You can't keep up with my preaching if you don't read what I read. You're going to be lost and you're going to be confused. Amen. You're going to wonder where I got that from. See, now, that doesn't say that you put people in hell, does it? Read that verse. What does it say? For the wrath of God. What's wrong with everybody reading? Come on, everybody read that for me. Now, I told you wrath means what? Poisoning venom, right? I told you uh, 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 it causes a burning sensation, doesn't it? When does that burning sensation stop? When you stop being angry. Because that burning sensation is what messes you up. Amen. And I'm telling you that God burning sensation is hell. I'm explaining what the wrath of God is. Putting you in hell. Because if you notice, go back and read. I'm going to show you something. Every time God put wrath on folk, he killed them. And when he killed them in his anger, where did they go? Amen. So when you get angry with a person and you kill them with your mouth, you put them in a burning sensation because you make them mad if they choose to be that way. So you're putting them in a hell that you created. And your hell don't last long like God. And it sure ain't as bad as God. So I'm telling you, that's why you got to read with me. I'm showing you that when God take care of disobedient folk, he sent them to hell. See, y'all think because God messed your life up. He ain't, he ain't, you won't see his wrath. You see his anger. You see his disappointment. You see his sadness. But when you get his wrath, ain't no way out. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Come on. Verse 7 says what? In the which ye also walk sometimes when you. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who is he talking to? Saints. That ain't written to sinners. That written to save folks. He said, James, you used to do this too. He said, but you shouldn't be doing this stuff no more. You used to put folks in hell with your anger. So why are you still, why are you saved and you still putting folks in hell with your anger? Why are you still, why are you still putting out venom? Listen, you ain't supposed to have that stuff no more. Listen, you ain't supposed to be putting that on people no more. It's in you, but you should not be dispersing it. Come on, read. In, in the which ye also walk sometime. Then some of us live in anger. Some of us, oh, see, y'all don't want to admit the truth. I told y'all the biggest problem with mankind, y'all don't like to deal with reality. 
Hallelujah. You deal with, listen, you deal with reality, you can get out of sin a whole lot faster. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, but now, but now, now Paul being sarcastic in a way, he said, well, there, but now you also put off these things, all these things, all these things. What's the first one he named? Stop putting folks in hell. Stop giving folks problems. Stop shooting out your venom. Stop biting folks like a viper. Stop letting folks feel your venom, your poisonous nature. Who like hanging around a snake? Folk got pet snakes. I don't mess with folk with snakes. I don't, tr I don't trust animals. There's not one animal on God's green earth that I trust. I don't trust them. I don't try, I've seen too many dogs turn on people. I've seen and read about too many snakes turning on folk. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm bad at trusting humans. Because I've seen too many folk turn on people. Oh, hallelujah. I ain't going to go that route. I'm going to get back. Come on. Verse 8 says what? But now you have put off all these things. Why are those the first two he named? Anger and, and malice. I mean, wrath. Why he named it all? Because those are the things that messes us up. Because of that venom, that poison, it gets in you. And it makes you, don't, you don't think clear when you're angry. You don't think clear when you're acting a fool. How many folks are in prison for killing somebody because they got angry? That's why I say I never own a gun. I never own a gun. Because once I pop you, that's it. I can't take that bullet back. I can stab you and I might stab you, get ready to stab you in your stomach. It might go for your, your shoulder. But once that bullet is gone, you can't catch it back. Oh, hallelujah. <coughs> Come on, read from the top. Verse 8. But now, all these things, anger, wrath, malice, all of that is linked together. Look at it. Anger, wrath, malice. Malice that you're so mad you want to kill them. Blasphemy, you're so mad you're lying on them. Oh, hallelujah. God said, y'all so mad you lie on me, meaning God, not John. Y'all so mad you want to you wanna cut somebody out that's malice. You so mad that you ready to kill them and get even. they all because you got angry. All that, you see what venom does? Because when venom hits you, won't it kill you? First it burns. You feel them two pokes from the, from the snake mouth. That hurt. You don't feel that, that poison right away. Then it gets in you. Then they tell me, I ain't never been bit by a snake. But they tell me, then you go to burning and you go to getting hot because it's messing with your blood. Then they go to messing with your brain and all of that. And before you know it, you're dead. God said, y'all better stop biting folks like snakes. Y'all better stop putting your venom. Y'all better stop putting all of your anger and your malice in folks. You better just learn to shut your mouth. You better learn to be quiet. Come on, read that verse again from the top. Amen. But now, you done put off. We don't, we, like, we don't do that. God. We say, we don't do that. We done put that stuff off. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication. Notice all of that stuff comes out of your mouth, out of, the, out of your heart. It's coming out of your mouth because it's in your heart. Out of the heart, out of the heart. Out of the heart, all that stuff come out your mouth because it's coming out of, oh, hallelujah, because it's coming out of your heart. But well, wait a minute. Got to read this one. Put something there. We're coming back. Go to Ecclesiastes. That's the Old Testament. You got Psalm, Proverbs, and Ecclesiastes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Because I know some of y'all, there ain't used to using your Bible, and that's Okay. Most people in here didn't know how to, all of us didn't know how to use our Bible until we started using it. So don't you feel bad. Nobody was born knowing where to find scriptures at. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, I believe it's verse 11. Yeah. I love this verse. I love this verse. The reason I love it so because God lets you know everything you got, I put it in you. And you can't do nothing about it. But I'm going to tell you how to control it. Come on, verse 11, read. What does it say? Everybody got it? Yeah. Read, verse 11. He say what? Yeah. He had made everything. God said everything I made is beautiful. Anger is beautiful sometimes. You don't get angry with the devil and you don't use that anger. You will never hate the devil and you will never learn to ignore him. 
So I had to give you that. But I didn't tell you to use it against humans. I told you to use it against the devil. Never told you to use it against righteousness. I told you to use it against evil. Y'all misusing that. Listen, I told y'all to have sex. I said you come together and make babies. But I didn't tell you to make no babies and you wasn't married. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all don't want to take stuff I gave you and take it out of context. Come on. Read from the top. Verse 11. He said what? He have made. Also he have set the world in their heart. So that no man can find out the work of God. Make it from the beginning. I put this stuff in your heart. To make sure y'all make it to heaven. But y'all keep abusing it. You keep misusing it. I gave you the ability to get angry. I gave you the ability to shoot out venom. But I want you to shoot it on the devil. I want you to shoot it on evil. I want you to shoot it on demons. I don't want you shooting it on people. The reason I tell you don't go to bed. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Because if you go to bed mad at the devil. You're going to dream about it. And then you're going to have bad nightmares. Because I told you the only reason you dream stuff. Is because you worried about it when you go to sleep. Why don't you go to bed happy. And you can wake up happy. Instead of waking up in these attitudes. Instead of you waking up mad at folk. You wake it up and people wonder what's wrong with you. You didn't get no sleep. Because you went to bed mad. You abuse what I give you. I put it in your heart. But you're using it wrong. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Let's go back to Colossians. Stop using stuff wrong. Everything God gave us, God gave it to us to make us better, not to make us worse. We don't, we don't, we don't give our children stuff for them to go around and, and, and put other children down, other kids down. Make them feel bad because their parents can't afford it. Amen. That's not why we, that's why, that's not, listen, what am I saying? God don't make our life better so we can go around and put down folk that don't have what we have. Listen, y'all get, y'all get, y'all get top, y'all get taught top grade information at Church of Apostles. That's why I tell y'all, don't y'all go to other churches and put people down because they, most pastors are, 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 are topical preachers. In other words, they don't get in debt. They don't make you see who you truly are. And that's between them and God. But don't y'all go put them down. What did I tell you? Just because you learn something before someone else does not make you smarter than them. You just learned it. You learned it today and going to make somebody else feel bad tomorrow. God will make you forget what you learned. He don't have to make you forget. Y'all forget anyway. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's why a lot of y'all forget it real quick. Because y'all too busy trying to put somebody else down. Like you done arrived. <laughs> you ain't arrived nowhere. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Come on. What, what, what verse was that? Verse 8. He said, build the communication out of your mouth. Everything that you do regarding anger and malice and malice. Uh, 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 Anger, malice, what was the other one? Wrath comes out of your mouth. Comes out of your mouth. If you control your mouth, your body won't respond. If you control your mouth, we talked about that all week. If you control your mouth, your body won't respond. The reason your body responds is because of your mouth. Close your old heart. He said, man that can control his mouth sees from sin. In other words, you ain't going to fight if you learn how to just shut up. But the problem is you won't shut up. You, you, you want to respond all the time, physically. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. First Thessalonians. Keep going forward. The next couple of books. Next book, rather, is First Thessalonians, chapter 5. What are we talking about? Stop putting folks in hell. Stop putting folks in hell. Now, somebody going to hear this. and try, oh, Now, he said, I don't care about them. They, they, they stupid. Go hear the whole message if you want to know what I meant by that. Amen. Stop putting folks in hell. We give people too many problems because of our venom, because of our wrath and our poison. We keep putting it on folks and we cause other folks to act a fool. Now, they shouldn't act a fool just like you should. But let's deal with reality. They do. But why don't you just be slow to speak and slow to rap? And then maybe that's why the, the scripture I love so much when he said, when you save a soul, you hide a multitude of Look how many folks I don't put in hell no more. Look how many folks I don't cause angry no more. 
Look how, many, look how much peace I call. Listen, look how much peace all of us that do right. Look how much peace we bring up on the earth and people homes and people family just by keeping our mouth closed, just by controlling our wrath, just by controlling our anger. Look how wonderful things are. Look how many, a lot of y'all got happy homes because your parents is not in there fussing and fighting and cussing and can on. That's right. Look, y'all know, many still supporters can't cuss each other out now. Amen. Don't you know some curse word? Yeah, I know a whole bunch of them. <laughs> and I know how to say them in a way where they cut you to heart. But because I'm saved, I put that stuff behind me because I can't use it no more. I'm saved. Right, right. Some of y'all still cussing folks out with the Holy Ghost. And then you go home bragging about you got them right. No, you just sent folks in hell and you didn't know the reason you sent them there because you already there. And you think you somebody? You mad because the driver pulled in front of you and you think you got even by throwing up a finger? All you did was made God want to send you to hell, to his hell. And you don't, oh hallelujah, you don't want to go to his hell. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Thank you Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 15, we got to stop this foolishness, y'all. It's foolishness. It's just straight up foolishness. Don't you want to go to heaven? Hallelujah. Ain't you, ain't you tired of getting angry? Yeah. James said, he said, ain't you tired of getting angry? Ain't you about sick of that? When you get angry, does Angela change? No. So what you going to do then? She ain't changing and you still angry. You know why she don't change? She used to your venom. She already knew you was going to do it when she did what she did. Because she used to your venom. She a minimum to it. Your venom, she does this. She knocking your venom off, your poisonous nature off, like I knock off a spider. Oh, hallelujah. I told my wife this morning I got up. I went to the bathroom. See, I know spiders. I know insects. I'm a country boy. Hey, Amen. Y'all didn't know God was grooming me to help y'all do a whole lot of stuff. Like I can tell you how to get rid of them cats and them fleas. I woke up in this spider. Y'all know the daddy long leg. They got a whole lot of legs, right? Well, there's another spider. It's got a whole lot of legs, but their body is like a little bitty ball. Them the spiders that produce a lot of spiders. That's the one with a whole lot of spiders. All they do is have babies. And this one was in the sink. I said, so you the one been bringing all these spiders in my house. Killing you. Because that's all you do. I know that. Amen. So I'm going to kill you quick. Now, my spiders is going to decrease in my house. Because now I don't know how it, he, she got in there. But they, they dead now. Hallelujah. What am I saying? I'm used to you. She used to your venom. She know when you're going to get upset. Isn't it amazing sometimes when we know our kids know we're going to get upset? And they still do it anyway, don't they? They're used to your mouth. They're used to your venom. They're used to your wrath. They're used to your anger. And it doesn't bother them. Then you got to come up with something different. Hallelujah. That's why when they do something wrong, they hide from you because I don't want to hear your mouth. Are you scared? And we say this. Are you scared? They ain't scared. If they were scared, they wouldn't have done it. Boy, they ain't afraid of you. Y'all listen to me. They ain't afraid of you. Because if they were afraid, they wouldn't have done it. They didn't want to hear your mouth. I'm used to your mouth. I'm used to your venom. But I don't feel like it. If you bring it in my room, I'll take it. But I ain't coming in the living room to get it. But I'm used to it. Oh, hallelujah. Folks are used to y'all low down ways. That's why they stay away from you. If you happen to show up at the party, okay, here come, here come, here come uh, Uncle Bob. Do you want to walk in your house and your kids say, oh, daddy coming home. You don't know they say that because they say that before you get in the house. But that's what they say it among each other. Here come dad. Y'all know he's going to be upset. Come on, let's go in here and get these snake bites so we can get it over with. That's why they don't shake when you get to yelling. They just stand there. Okay, Dad. Okay, Mom. They used 
used to it. You ain't bothering them. They used to them bites. But they really sick of them. Then they'll make a phrase one day. I can't wait to get out this house. You wonder why they want to get out the house. Because they sick of your venom. All you got to do is control yourself. Correct them the right way. Correct them where they say, I don't want to get out the house. But I'm glad you keep correcting me, daddy. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This all, listen, y'all stick with me this money. It's going to make sense. And y'all really look in your life. This is really what goes on in our home. That's what goes on in the body of Christ. And God said, I'm tired of it. Why don't y'all stop? I don't want to yell at you. I don't want to. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 15 said what? See that she render. Don't render evil to evil to nobody. In other words, God said they're going to treat you evil. They're going to treat you evil, but don't you render it. They're going to mistreat you, but don't you give it back. Oh, hallelujah. Y'all know how God correct us all the time to keep us right? Whoop our behind. But he never lays a physical hand on us, does he? But he know how to put you through something. We call it humble in the experience. Oh, hallelujah. Now, Mike, why this? God say, God say, the reason your kids keep getting on your nerves because you don't rule them in fear. The Bible says if you don't know how to rule your own house in fear, you ain't going to never take care of the house of God. That's why I tell you, when one mess up two or three times, whoop the whole house. They say, I ain't done nothing. That's how you did something. I let you got away with it. I'm catching up. I know a lot of parents say that wrong. Listen, that's what my mama did. She come home mad and one mess up, everybody getting a whooping. Now, guess what? Guess what? I'm going to make sure you don't mess up no more. Because we know you did it and you did it. We're going to whoop you so you don't mess up so we don't have to get no whoopings no more. Right. Now we become, oh hallelujah, now we become a keeper of our brothers, don't we? Yeah. I'm going to whoop, no, you ain't doing that. I'm, you ain't, you staying home, boy, because if you leave and get caught, get in trouble, we all getting a whooping, so you ain't going nowhere. We going to fight. And then when mama come home and say, why did y'all whoop Bay? We whoop Bay because he was doing something you told him not to do. Mama gone in her room. And everybody happy. What am I saying? If we love our brothers and keep our brothers and watch over our sisters, listen, none of us to get in trouble. Yeah. So we are our brother's keeper, but instead we want to render evil for evil. Yeah. Time for us to stop that. Yeah. It's time for us to put that stuff aside. Come on. From, uh, 15 from the top. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but every... Mama came home. Callie, why you keep crying? What's the matter? Be quiet. Turn around. Ain't nobody holding you. You got it? One time my nephew set the kitchen curtains on fire. He loved to play with matches. Why that boy like to be a crook? He putting something on Facebook talking about me. Hey Amen. He set the kitchen curtain on fire. Burn it up. We you know, kind of put this fire out. And so we put new curtains up there. Mama never asked what happened. We never told. Not, not that I know of. So if she asked somebody, I don't know what kind of answer she got, but nobody never got a whooping for that. Because we ain't telling. Because first they know, Benny, this little, why is he playing with the matches? Where did he get the matches from? So you see, we all would have got in trouble. <laughs> now if she asked, we're going to have to come clean. I personally don't know if she ever asked anybody. Amen. But we protected our brother. We didn't go around and snitch on him. What am I saying? We didn't go around and put him down and talk about him. So everybody else is wondering what's wrong with what's wrong with Beverly at Church of Apostolicity. Oh, hallelujah. We had one incident here, and it was a deacon and somebody's wife. How did he get five churches over there? Because y'all went out running your mouth telling other folks when y'all should have been praying. What am I saying? Because you running your mouth, spreading your venom, you messing up. Else. Listen, we ain't going to church that have crazy stuff happen. Right. But you don't hear about another church because the saints know how to keep the mouth closed. We don't agree with what you did, but we ain't going to go around and tell the world what you did. Right. Then they go to Hollywood where they are deported. Now I'm guilty because you. 
Oh, hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. But every, but every, but every follow that which is good, both among yourself. You wouldn't tell if it was in your house, would you? All children, I want you to put your head down. Just look down at the floor. Just the children. Amen. You ain't telling us about your mom and daddy cussing each other out in the house, are you? So I don't want y'all looking because your face may tell it. Amen. So just look down. I don't want to get you in trouble. Amen. Some of y'all got spouses that still looking at pornography and, 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 and drinking and cussing. Y'all think it ain't going on in the church? That's why he was writing to the church. What am I saying? You know how to keep, because when you go out and tell stuff on folk that you ain't, you're going to stir them up. And because you're going to make them angry. It's a burning sensation. And then you're going to put it on somebody else. So stop putting folks in hell because of you. You need to get a, listen, get a grip on your life. Come on. Let's read another scripture. Thank you, Jesus. Make sure I'm not missing one. Romans chapter 12. I tell y'all stuff to support it due to me because I be laughing. Hopefully to help y'all to know that one day your wife might do it to you. Amen. I don't do it to try to, I think it's funny. And I like to do it because like, I be thinking like, Lord, what in the world did that come from? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Romans chapter 12. She don't tell y'all that I do either. And I ain't going to tell you either. So don't think, don't think I'm going to tell you this because she ain't telling you. Ain't nobody telling. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. What am I saying, y'all? Listen, when we run around angry and malice and wrath, all that is is poison. Right. Stuff is poison. Right. Poison. Listen, let's, let's pour the poison and flush it down the toilet. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Chapter 12, Book of Romans, verse 17. Read. Recompense. To no man, evil for evil. Let's do right. I'm helping folks go to heaven, not helping folks go to hell. That's what we all should be thinking. We're here to help folks go to heaven, not help folks go to hell. Control your anger. Get rid of it. Dump it. Put it in the trash. Forget about it. Because all it is is your old stinky opinion anyway. That's something you perceive to be wrong. Or if it is wrong, you and you can't correct me. You ain't got the power to correct me. You got the power to run your mouth and tell me, but you ain't got the power to correct me. You ain't got that kind of power. We barely, 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 if we got it on our kids. Because if we had it, they would obey us. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So what? Verse 18 said what? If it be possible, as much that lies in you, No matter all they, I, I love the scripture where people really can't understand. Say, if it be possible. So they saying, they saying, well, I got the right to be angry. Hot diggity dog, you sure do. But you can't use it. He didn't say it. Now, the reason he said, if it be possible, you need to work on it. You need to get it. You need to work hard on it. You need to put a lot of emphasis on it. You need to get to the point that I'm going to get there. Listen, hallelujah, I didn't get there overnight, and you can't get there overnight. But if you don't work on it, you'll never get there. You ain't never got good at something doing, never doing it. Anybody got good at something, never doing it? Listen, so it, you can't get there. But you got to start at some point. You can live peaceable with all men. Hallelujah. But you got so much. Some of y'all are so evil and low down and built in your fiber. Everything you do, your walk, your talk, your look, your dress, your action, everything about you, folks don't want to be bothered with you. I don't know why people don't want to be bothered with me. I'm telling you because you got too much venom. It come out of every word, come out of every conversation, and come out in every time you talk, people see the venom that's coming out of you because you're mad. Listen, you complain about some. Listen, it's, it's sad when you hear somebody complain about somebody else all the time. Do you really think ain't nothing wrong with you? Yes, and it might be all of it wrong with you. Right. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know why nobody don't like me. <laughs> well, first of all, for John Porter's, I don't care. 
That's why it ain't no big deal. But for all of y'all that want folk to like you, God said, beware when everybody like you. Everybody like you. So everybody liking you, that, just, that means you're a men pleaser. Amen. That means you so busy becoming what they want you to be, you don't know who you are. Because ooh, I, there's things you have to do to make me happy, to make her happy, to make her happy, to make her happy, to make her happy, to make him happy. Now you want to be all six of us? Now who are you? Who are you? Because ain't neither one of us the same. Neither one of us. I'm a type of guy, when I stomp, you better jump. Amen, like. You ain't got to say amen. That's still who I am. Amen. I ain't going to tell you all their personality, but they, they ain't none of them like that. So I got to work on John wanting folk to jump. I, I have to work on John to fix John. Amen. See, the problem, y'all spend too much time trying to fix somebody else instead of fixing yourself. Amen. And that's why you got so much venom, because you want folk to conform to you. Ain't nobody going to conform to you. Amen. When you conform to Christ, I conform to you. Is that a fair deal? Come on. Verse 18 said, 19 said what? Dearly beloved, avenge some of y'all already tired because God is showing you stop worrying about who you are. Don't render evil for evil. Get all of that junk out of you and y'all got now, man. I don't want to hear this sermon today. Why? Because you got so much venom. You got so much venom in you. He said what? Avenge dearly beloved. Avenge not yourself. Don't walk around trying to get even with what folks did to you. Well, I gave them this and they can't do this for me. That's a vengeance. You want to, in other words, if, if, since I did this for you, why you ain't doing that for me? That's avenging yourself. So now you got an attitude. Now you can go talk about a uh, uh, pastor Porter or Elder Whitfield or somebody because they didn't do something you thought they ought to do because of what you did. That's venom. Venom. That's why I struggle letting folks do stuff for me because I don't want none of y'all to ever come back say you did nothing for me. Oh, hallelujah. And I know a lot of people struggle with that. I just know I struggle very hard with that. Amen. Hallelujah. Avenge not yourself. Amen. But rather give place on the wrath. For it is written. Get, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Give place. You asked me this morning in Sunday school. I held this part back. When you ask me, so how do you just let a person punk you out? He said, give a place to it. So what do you think you ought to do? Now, I told you one way to solve it. Now, this is the, is the easy or the hardest, Lord. I would say this is the easiest way. Give unto it. Don't worry about what people, how do, how did they, how, how do you know they punk you out? Because you said that. They weren't trying to punk you out. They just want to mistreat you. That's what they like to do. Okay. He said, don't render evil for evil. So you got to take it. So you just tell the Lord, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. All things work together for the good. So the next time Nina slap you, just say, all things work together for the good. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. That's all you got to do. But y'all don't want to do that. But that's what the Bible said. Nobody wants to take the punishment that God has ordained for you because of the venom that's in you. The only reason Nina will slap you, revise that. The only reason that God will let Nina slap you because he said no weapon can do nothing to you unless I approve it. Why you think I approved it, John? Because you got too much venom. So slap him and let me see how much venom come out of him. Slap him. <laughs> see how much venom come out. Now if she slapped you and no venom come out, she'll never slap you again. Because God said, oh, all of his venom, gone. So now I got to test you in another area. 
Listen, the reason y'all not being tested in certain areas because y'all ain't got problems in those areas. If you got a problem in that area, you're going to be tested. You're going to be tested. That's why I tell y'all I welcome all of y'all. Why? Because everything you do, if it upset me, it's because I got a problem in that area. I just don't go around boasting it. I say, okay, Lord, so you fixing me, huh? You getting me right. Y'all can keep being evil. Do what you want to do. I don't care. Not when it comes to me. Y'all do, please do what you need. That's why you hear me tell the devil, please shoot your best shot. Because it's just going to make me better. No, I don't want to be broke. No, I don't want to be sick. No, I don't want to, I don't want to. But if that's going to make me better, then I have to, I have to, well, what did Paul say? I give pleasure. I take pleasure in all of my persecution, my affliction, all of my problems. I take pleasure. I love it because when I'm weak, that's when I'm at my best. Listen, don't you want to be strong? Well, we got to get the weakness out of you. Well, how do you know the weakness? The testing child is going to reveal what you made of. Wood, stubble, hay, gold. It's a, listen, your testing child is going to show you what you are. Without testing child, you ain't going to never know who you are. You're going to keep lying to yourself. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You come into your marriage with an attitude, you can bet you your family going to give you problems all the time. And it ain't even them, it's you. Because your family ain't doing no more than nobody else's family doing. It's just how you receive. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. What verse was that? That was 20, 19. He said, vengeance is mine. Come on, y'all read. Are y'all enjoying it? Oh, am, I, am, I, am I preaching too hard? Y'all want me to preach some song? Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. You can't avenge nobody. I take care of that department. Vengeance is mine. You just get a handle on your venom. You get a handle on your poisonous attitude. You get a handle on your poisonous mouth. We're going to read that. He said your mouth is full of poisonous acts. I'm going to show you all that scripture. Probably won't get it today. He said every time you open your mouth. That's why last month we talked about you keep your mouth closed. Amen. You keep your mouth closed, that poisonous venom won't come out. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you. Therefore, oh, oh. He said, now if you can keep your mouth closed and you realize vengeance is mine, he said, therefore, this is what I want you to do. Read. He said, what? If thy enemy hunger, if he thirst, if your enemy is hungry, you got somebody here, you mad at them? Take them to lunch. What did I tell y'all to do? You got an enemy? I don't know, I ain't got no kids. <laughs> you got an enemy? You go buy them a gift. Have you made somebody your enemy? Take them to lunch. Pastor, I just don't like them. Take them to lunch. So next time y'all come to me and say, Pastor, I just don't like, take them to lunch. If that don't work, take them to dinner. And don't take them to no Carl Jr. <laughs> take them to Crab Shack. Take them to, 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 to one of them fancy restaurants. Feed them good. good. We were all God enemies. He fed us good, yeah. didn't he? Then gave us the holy, oh glory, hallelujah. Then gave us the holy ghost. We then gave us the best meal anybody could get. But we were all his enemies. If thy enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirsty, give him the drink. In doing so, ye shall heap coals of fire. In other words, you'll convert him. You'll convert him. But y'all too busy wanting to put venom on venom. God said be a peacemaker. What's wrong with becoming a peacemaker? Why you can't become a peacemaker? You work hard to be evil. Why don't you work just as hard, if not harder, to be good? Some of y'all wake up proud. I'm going I'm to I'm get them today. Let them say this to me. I'm going to straighten them out today. You already on purpose in your heart what you're going to do if somebody say something to you crooked. 
Why can't you wake up and say, Lord, let them say something to me crooked today so I can learn to shut my mouth, so I can learn to show them love. Say, Lord, I need help. I'm tired of feeling. I'm tired of getting upset. You listen, Lord, send me the test again. Some of y'all are scared to pray them prayers, but then you, you know, you're risking hell if you're scared to pray them prayers. I ain't afraid to pray them. I want to go home. I want to go to heaven. I need all of those tests and trials. Otherwise, I won't make it. So I'm not afraid of them. I may not like them, but I'm not afraid of them. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, Luke chapter 21. No, I'm sorry. One more, one more. Verse 21 before we leave them over here. Verse 21 says what? Be not what? Watch this. Every time, every time somebody mistreats you, and you respond, evil overcame you. Every time somebody do something that make you mad, evil overcame you. Every time somebody do something and you hold a grudge, evil overcame you. So you see how you can be overcome with evil six or seven times in one day, then you wonder by why by the time you get home you all upset? Because evil done whoop you down. Why can't you walk in the house? Hey, honey, how you doing? How was your day? Somebody walk in the house, how was your day? Man, they crazy at that job. <laughs> Cause evil done whoop you down all day. Ain't that what you say? Oh man, I had a hard day. Cause they done woke you down, evil. Even and suck you all kinds of way. Or you come home and say, I gotta find another job. Even and wore you down. <laughs> Why don't you overcome all evil with good? I'm just thinking about it. I see why you're laughing so hard. He, he was telling me about they crazy at his job. To my, to my, they don't speak. I said, keep speaking to them. I like speaking to folk that don't speak to me. I like that before I got saved. But I was doing it to be evil. <laughs> Didn't know it was for the good, but I was doing it to be evil. They don't speak to me. I said, why you ain't speaking to me today? Well, why are you speaking to me? I said, because I just want to say hi. Why are you all upset? <laughs> you all upset. What you upset about? And then they find out they don't know. Because evil and overcame them and they become a part. But I keep pouring all this goodness on them. And then finally I come in. Then all of a sudden me and this girl are sleeping together because she only speaks to me. Because y'all really be evil for evil. Y'all didn't know I tore that evil down. I tore that wall down. Me and her ain't got nothing going on. But when I walk in, I say, how you doing, Housing? Oh, I'm fine. Everybody that walk in, she just look at them. Because I confronted the evil. Y'all, listen, y'all fighting, y'all working with the evil, I'm fighting against it. I started out to be sarcastic. Because I want to know how can somebody be messed up from waking up? <laughs> I, don't, I couldn't comprehend you upset for waking up. Why don't you just lay there and die in? <laughs> Slit your throat and you don't got to wake up no more. Oh, hallelujah. Why you want to wake up upset? Why y'all go to bed angry and wake up angry? Is that a lot of fun? Y'all get fun out of being upset? Y'all get fun out of rapping and raving and stomping and kicking? Then why don't you overcome evil with? Work at it. You can do it. Because somebody going to say something cross to you all the time. That's why I told y'all last week. Come on, let's go to Luke 21. I said, y'all don't know people's stories. You don't know why people. Y'all don't know why people the way they are. But why don't we fix them? We got folk that coming in the church and they got all kinds of stuff going on. Amen. Folks coming in the church, all kinds of stuff going on. Why don't we find out what's going on? Why don't we help them out? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. God is good. God is good. But we got to use the weapons that he gave us to make us better. Come on, Luke chapter 21. 
Thank you, Jesus. Verse 17. Oh, my time is, man, boys. Lord, time just flying today. Come on, verse 17. Read. What does it say? Now, God has already told you, you're going to be hated of all men because you love him. So let's clear that up. You love Jesus? Yeah. Ain't many people going to like you. Everybody got that? Yeah. Do you love Jesus? Yeah. So you already know a lot of folks ain't going to like you. Now, for the sake, I'm going to let you tell that lie and get away with it. But let's understand yeah. something. Bible says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Amen. But we won't get into that for the sake of the discussion. So, but since you want to say you love him, the only reason people are going to mistreat you is because you keep doing what's right. Because God is using the evil to make you better. So you wonder why you struggle. You're struggling because you're struggling to do right. So God going to help you out to get better. I wouldn't know how to live on nickels and dimes if I've never lived on nickels and dimes. I wouldn't know how to live. Listen, that, that, I, I've lived with not having a new car so long till I don't want a new car. That car my wife got, that's her car. Straight up, that's her car. I don't want a new car. I live with one so long, without one so long, I get in her car and they got all of these frills and thrills, they freak me out. Like, I don't need all that. I don't need, I don't need all that. I don't need my seat moving automatically. <laughs> I don't like pressing reverse and then I can see behind me right there. That, 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 I don't like that. That kind of unnerves me. I do this immediately. Because I want to look, I want to see what's back there. I want to use my mirrors. Somebody say, well, you don't want luxury. Nope, so don't. Because I done got used with not having it and I'm okay with that. Amen. I'm having less accidents than you. Keep on using your, your camera. Let me use my eyeballs. Amen. What are you saying? I'm not putting nobody down because you got it. But what I'm saying, I've learned to be content in the state I am. And I can only learn that by going through testing trial. Right. Right. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Remember I rented a car and I was going to Tulare. And, and, and it was a Ford... Is it the, not the escape? Don't they have something under the escape? No, it was a, it's the, the SUV. Wasn't the Fusion? No, it was a Toyota. No, the smaller one. Rav, Rav Four. That's what it was. I put stuff in cruise when I drive, so I'm flying, 75 miles an hour. I'm laid back. All of a sudden, the car hit brakes. I'm going, what's wrong? What's that? <laughs> You know, and I took that cruise off because you're scaring me. You know, I thought I said something. So I did it again. And I found out it had the system like yours, guy, where the car gets so close it automatically breaks. I turned that off. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I, I don't trust that. Let me, let me slow down on my own. Let me know I'm slowing. Don't slow me down. Amen. What am I saying? Listen, I'm not into all of that stuff. I, I'm content. When you get content, hallelujah, God is saying, listen, understand, John, folks going to mistreat you. That comes in the package of salvation. Come on, read this. But there shall, come on, y'all read, y'all need to know this. The reason y'all are afraid because y'all don't know what kind of protection you got. What does it say? But what? Not one hair on your head is going to perish. Not one hair. That means you ain't going to never be put in a situation where you are not blessed. See, y'all, at the, at the preacher, y'all should have shouted on that. See, then you ain't going to never be put in a situation where you are not blessed. Well, you say, well, Pastor, how in the world of I'm blessed and I'm broke? Because you're learning how to be content. That's a blessing. Well, Pastor, how am I blessed when folks are mistreating me? Because you are learning how to win enemies to Christ. Listen, ain't nothing like, listen, I, I, to see five people get the Holy Ghost. I don't remember who I was sitting in the back. I said, now, all of the money me and my wife done put in this church, it's worth it to see them five kids get the Holy Ghost. 
But if I had never put all of our money in the church, I'd have never saw that. Amen. What am I saying? So I'm ready to put more thousands of dollars in so I can get some more kids. I'm glad to see all of the kids sitting there, the young people, especially the girls. We need some boys too. But I'm glad because, listen, when y'all get saved, the baby population with unpregnancy is going to decrease. All because, Holly, because I keep putting my money in the church. Ain't nobody going to touch one hair on your head. Listen, that's going to cause you a problem. I don't care what you go through. That's the word of God. It won't change just because somebody told you it would. Because God said he's a not a God that should lie. But you got to believe this. If you don't believe it. So what you getting angry for? He said. Folks don't like you, but they can't touch you. Folks don't like you, but they can't mistreat you. Folks hate your gut, but they can't abuse you. So what's the problem? I done told you everybody ain't going to like you, and I done told you can't nobody harm you. So what's the problem? Why are you getting upset? I done told you folks don't care about your opinion, but I done told you they can't hurt you. I done told you folks ain't going to listen to the truth, but you upset because they don't listen to you. I done told you you don't need to be nobody master, so why are you telling folks what to do? You ain't equipped. Verse 19 said what? In your patience. Take it in the chest. When you say bow your back and take it. Take it in the chest. Because in patience I'm going to beat you down. But you ain't going to die. Y'all remember the sermon I preached about the palm tree? As tall as you see it. That's how much is in the ground. I told you it'll bend, but it never breaks, does it? Soon as the wind stops, it comes back up. No matter how people mistreat you, you ain't going to break. No matter how much people dog you out, you ain't going to break. And that's what he said. In patient, you just stand strong. The wind going to stop. It's going to come again, but it's going to stop this time. It's going to come again. The rain going to stop, but it's going to come again. And every time it rain, I get you more and more used to the rain. I don't use no umbrella in the rain. We didn't grow up with umbrellas. We grew up walking in the rain like this. So that's not when it's rain. I'm used to it. I walk tall. Now I put a hat on. That's it. Everybody else, I see them walking with umbrellas doing this. I'm walking straight up. Amen. I'm used to the rain. Amen. I'm used to the, the bad weather. I'm used to not having food. I'm used to, used to, used to. And y'all are too. But the problem is y'all forget what you're used to because you're too busy coveting. You're looking what everybody else got and you think you ought to have because you go to work every day. Wow. Well, that person ain't saved or that person living a raggedy life. Listen, all that glitter ain't gold. Folks ain't doing what you're doing to do right. You think, listen, you looking at what they got, but you ain't looking at what they're doing to get what they got. Because they see that stuff is behind closed doors. Y'all know we still got folks in the church, not this church, not that I know of, that still sell drugs and say they save. I ain't going to question whether they are or not, but they still selling drugs. And they're going to tell me not to preach about it. Negro, you done lost your mind. Don't preach about all sin. Come on. Come on. What verse we at? 20? That's all I want for right now. I'm going to give you one more verse. Ecclesiastes chapter, chapter 7. Y'all got too much venom. Stop putting folks in hell. Everybody understand what I mean by that? Stop arguing, getting angry, showing people your wrath, because every time you do it, you put somebody in hell. Now, we know you ain't putting them in the hell, but you're putting them in an awkward situation where you're making them angry. A burning sensation. You know, <laughs> you can... You can, you can be so mean so long, people get immune to it and they don't respond to it. Now that make you more angry, don't they? Because you thought, because you barked. Chapter 7, Ecclesiastes. Verse 9. Anybody like mosquito bites? But you don't freak out when you get, well, some of y'all do. 
Oh, y'all, some of us don't freak out when we get them. We like, don't go on mosquito bit me. That's what Angela does when you go to yell at her. Oh, there he go again. She's immune to it. She's immune to it. She's immune to it. She's immune to it. She doesn't like it. I don't want no bump on me from no mosquito bite, but I'm immune to them. I know I ain't going to die. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. Chapter 7, verse 9. Read. What does it say? Be not what? Be not what? Don't be in no hurry to be upset. Because a lot of y'all be in a hurry. Like I was using the scenario. I can't wait to straighten them out on Monday. You in a hurry. In a hurry to be upset. I'm going to get them right this week because I ain't going through this no more. You in a hurry. Shut your mouth. They, wait till I get home. I'm going to fix this. I'm calling them. I'm going to fix this mess right now. You in a hurry to get upset. You're already upset. Now you ready to go and put some venom, your old poisonous nature. Stop putting folks in hell. Stop arguing. You can't do it as long as you keep opening your mouth. That's why we preached all month, last month. Learn to shut up. Read from the top. Verse 9. Be not. Angry rest is in the bosom of Y'all know what rest is mean. It sleeps there. Sleep. Rest is ETA, meaning it never stops. That meaning you're a fool every day of your life. Now, do you want to be a fool? Well, you need to stop being angry then. Did I not, what did that say? If you are angry, you are what? Come on, if you are angry, you you what? So y'all walking around calling folks a fool? You see, you didn't know you was one too, huh? Now call yourself a fool. No, I want you to do that. Call yourself a fool. No, I'll say, I'm a fool. Maybe you won't call nobody else a fool. Because if anger, if you get angry at least once a day, you're a fool. Because nobody cares about your opinion. You running around trying to tell folks what to do. They looking at you like, you're a fool. I ain't studying about your opinion. You just don't say that. You show that. Do y'all, do y'all see that? Didn't he say you're a fool? So you getting angry about them cats. You get angry because somebody punk you out. You get angry because somebody made you a sandwich. You getting angry parents because the kids didn't wash the dishes. You're a fool. Them kids knew you was going to get upset because they didn't wash them dishes and they still didn't wash them, did they? She knew you was going to get upset if she didn't make that sandwich. She still didn't make that sandwich, did she? You done talked to that man three or four times about them cats and he still ain't did nothing about them. The person done punked you out ten times and they're going to punk you out again before the month is over. And you still throwing out venom, you're a fool. You're a fool. Why don't you just ignore them? Let them be the fool. What did Solomon say? Don't argue with a fool. It's too hard to tell the difference. So let somebody know who the fool is. Now, it might be you. But ain't you tired of looking like a fool? Nobody cares. Watch this. Listen, how many times have you gone off the deep handle and yelled and fussed and cussed and people walk away and look at you like you boo-boo the fool? And they go right and do what they want to do anyway. Nobody had that happen to them? And you still fussing. And they don't care. I'm used to your venom. 
I'm used to people not liking me. I'm used to folk not liking the way I preach. I'm used to people treat me mean. Lord, I'm used to that. So when you do it, do you really think you change me? I grew up like that. I was shaping like that. I was formed like that. Oh, hallelujah. God say, when y'all gonna get it? So why don't you do yourself a favor? Stop putting folks in hell. Why don't you stop breathing? Come on, let's go back to our base scripture. Proverbs 15, 18. Remember this. Anger or wrath is a state of intense, intense displeasure based on something real or something perceived to be wrong. I'm not a person to say please. I'm not a person to say thank you. I'm not a person to say those things. I'm not a person to, to, to I'm not a person that expect to hear you say thank you. I'm, I'm not that kind of person. I am not gonna change that about me. You know why? Because it keeps me from getting angry. I, am, I don't get angry about that stuff all my life. You think I'm gonna add that so I can get angry? Because you don't have to appreciate what I do for you. Because I didn't do it to make you happy. I did it to make me happy. You the recipient of me trying to make myself happy. Because when I see you happy, I'm happy. I don't need you to say you happy. If you know you ain't got no money and I give you $100, you ain't got to say thank you. I know you happy. So I don't need you to say thank you, pastor. I know you happy. Amen. You stranded and I give you a ride. I don't need you to say thank you. You stranded. Whether you like it or not, you happy. I don't need folk to, to what they say, pat me on the back to make me feel good about what I do. Because I don't do it for a pat on the back. I do it because I see you. What did I tell you young people? When I take y'all to the beach, I don't like being on no beach. But what makes me happy about being on the beach? Because you like being on the beach. So I'm happy. You don't need that sand. All in your hair and your clothes. and You, you know you didn't even put no sand in your pocket. You get home sand in your pocket. <laughs> All your clothes. You got to strip at the door to keep from taking sand in the house. Amen. Holly, come on. Come on. Last verse. Last verse. I'm going to make y'all shout one day before the week, before the month is out. Amen. What did I say? Proverbs 15. Verse 18. What do you say? A poisonous man. Come on, change wrath for the poisonous. A poisonous man. A poisonous man, all you do is cause confusion. But he that is slow to if you ain't poisonous, you can turn down. You can stop a whole lot of confusion. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Come on, stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Come on, stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet. Listen, y'all, stop sending folks to hell. Stop sending folk to hell. Stop it. Stop it. Nobody, nobody on God's green earth walks around, walks around to please but one person. It's sad but true. It's themselves. The more you get saved, the closer you get to God, then you want to please God. I don't ever, I will never walk around to please none of y'all. I walk around to please God. And pleasing God, I'm going to please you. Because if I walk around to please you, I never please God. Everybody understand that? Y'all done heard me say for years, I do not treat my wife right. I love my wife. I go to bat for her for anything, for any time, any day, for any reason. But I do that because I love God. As long as I love God, I'm obligated to love her like that. But if I switch the role, then I'm not going to love God. Because she might ask me to do something one day that's not godly. Now what am I going to do? You understand? 
All of y'all could ask me to do something that's not godly. And you don't know it's not godly. But me and God know, what am I, what am I going to do now? Because I love you so much, I'm going to do it? Ananias and Sapphira, they got in some serious trouble because of that. I'm not going to let mankind, human, women, girl, boy, wife, nobody going to make me do nothing that the Bible say I cannot do. So I have to work on my anger. I have to work on my attitude. I have to work on keeping my mouth closed. Listen, if we want to go to heaven, y'all, it ain't about all of this dancing and wiggling and singing and flag waving and praise dancing and, 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 and chicken dinners and, and, and music and musicals and concerts and all. It ain't about all that stuff, y'all. It's about living holy. It's about living right. It's about getting to heaven. Amen. And that's all I'm going to preach to you. Amen. Amen. If you want something else, you're going to have to find yourself another church because I'm not going to do it for you. Amen. Amen. I'm going to give you a mini concert today down there. Y'all want to come down there? Y'all want to hear singing? They're going to do a, a mini concert. Amen. Then I'm going to get up and talk because the Lord dropped it on my heart. I said, Lord, I said, now I know we don't go down there like we should because of our calendar. We're getting ready to do the new calendar. I said, but we're not reaching the people. He said, John, you got to remember they sinners. They want music. He said, go in there and sing. He said, y'all don't sing crazy songs. He said, go in there and give them some singing. Get their attention. Got to be wise as a serpent. Get their attention. And then when you got them all hyped up, preach the word to them. Because, see, I'm not going to change the word. I'm not going to change the word of God. Y'all sing, sing excellent songs, choir. Amen. So they going to come and hear a good song. And then here's the other thing. We treat them with love, y'all. We treat them with love. So we get them in there and they get to singing. All of a sudden, I dive up and go to putting them in hell. <laughs> Amen. That's what we have to do. We got to draw them. Amen. But they ain't getting no concert every time we go down there. But we going to get them. Don't y'all give up. Cause I see, a, I see a lot of y'all slacking. Don't give up. I told y'all it's like starting another church. Amen. You got to convince these people that been doing the same thing for 10, 12, 15 years. All of a sudden we got to convince them now on Sunday, get out of that apartment and come down here and praise God. Amen. 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 Now who wants prayer? Come on, uh, ministers. Who want prayer? Somebody want prayer? Somebody want the Holy Ghost? Amen. You need help? You tired of being angry? You tired of having an attitude? You tired of having an attitude? Now, if nobody tired of having an attitude, we can go home. Amen. I don't beg nobody to come to the altar. Because I don't know. Well, I do know. But you know if you got an attitude or not. All the time. Some of the time. He did up for me. You know if you got an attitude. You know if you got an attitude. You know if people make you mad real quick. You know if you waiting to straighten somebody out. Wait a minute. Here's a good one. You waiting to straighten somebody out tomorrow? Get up here and get some prayer. You can't straighten nobody out. Nobody listening to you. You can't straighten nobody out. Bow down and worship him. Thank you, Lord. Worship him. Yes, Lord. Oh, worship him. Hallelujah. Bow down and worship him. Enter in. Oh, enter in, consuming fire, sweet perfume, this awesome presence fills this room, consuming fire, sweet perfume, his awesome presence fills this room. Consume fire, sweet perfume. His awesome presence 
presence fills this room. So come and bow, bow down, bow down and Nobody else want pray? That's it. Him. Worship. Y'all don't have no him. attitude problem. Y'all don't have anger problem. Oh, Nobody got angry. Ralph wishes. Bow down, bow down. Come and let somebody help you out. Come on, let the minister help you out. Enter in. Come on, let the minister help you out. Oh, enter in. Let the minister help you out. You know you got those issues. Why don't you shake them? You can get rid of them today. You can get rid of them today. Worship Hallelujah. Oh, you can, you can get rid of them. Bow down, bow down and worship You can get rid of them. Worship him. Oh, worship him. Consuming fire, sweet perfume, his awesome presence fills this Hallelujah. room. Consuming fire, sweet perfume, his awesome presence fills this room so come and bow bow down so come and bow bow down so come and bow bow down so Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let us stand. Everybody standing. See, this is this is one of the things that 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 bothers a pastor. Now, I know pretty much everybody in here personality. The only one I know I don't know is the one obviously first time visiting. And some of y'all, I don't see you but so often. But a lot of y'all, I don't see you but every so often. I still know your attitude, your personality. It don't take much for me to learn. I told y'all I got x-ray vision. I can look and know what you're going through. And then I, I see when there's an opportunity for you to come for God to help you out. Because I know you got attitude problem. And you don't come up here. That bothers me. It's like, what do you, what do you, what do you want? Remember, I, I, I preached the sermon, what do you hear? What do you hear when, I, when the word is going? What do you hear? It's for you. Amen. It's for you. You know you got an attitude problem. Listen, to be honest with you, everybody in here got an attitude problem. But some of y'all know y'all struggle with it. You struggle hard with it. Now God is saying you got to get control over that attitude. Anger, wrath, malice, future communication coming out your mouth. That's, that, uh, it, it, that's part of cussing. Yes. Yes. I mean, y'all know you cuss at the drop of a heartbeat. Well, Lord, got to forgive me for that. No, you need to stop it. Because if he was to mark iniquity, you would die. Amen? You don't want that. You don't want that. You don't want that. Trust me, you don't want that. You don't want the wrath of God on you. Amen? Like I said, there's no serving tonight. But please, 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 come to the service. Come to the service at 3.30 down the street at Adams West. Amen. We're going to be there. We're only going to be there for an hour. And then y'all are off for the rest of the night. You don't have to come back till tomorrow night for prayer. Amen. Come on, Elder Whitfield. You open. Everybody good? Thank you, Lord.
Every head bowed. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We say thank you. We say thank you for this word, Lord God. We say thank you, Lord God, for taking the time out to talk to us about our attitudes, our yes. anger, Lord God, our wrath, Lord God. We say, say thank you for getting us right, Lord God, Get a, getting us heaven prepared, Lord Jesus. We just say thank you right now, Lord God. Help us to take every word, Lord God, everything that you said, Lord yes. God. Yes. Put it in our hearts, Lord God. Help us to dwell on it, meditate on it, Lord God. So we want to help us to get it deep down in our hearts so we want won't sin against you, Lord God. Take on, forgive us of our anger, Lord God. Forgive us of our wrath. Forgive us for putting people in hell, Lord God. Forgive us, Lord Jesus, of everything we have done against people, against ourselves, against you, Lord God. Forgive us right now, Lord God. And we continue to bless your name and, and keep us on today, Lord God. Help us to not run our mouths, Lord God, but to just dwell on what you have taught us all this weekend today, Lord Jesus, and bring us back to the next appointed time at Adams West, Lord God, so we can praise your name again, Lord God, to, to draw some more people unto you, Lord God. Bless us all. Bless our pastor in a mighty way. Continue to strengthen him, Lord God. Strengthen his family. Strengthen everything about him, Lord God, as he get closer and closer to you, Lord. And bless all of us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.